hey guys um i was just driving and you know god just put this thought you know in my spirit um and then it just fascinated me like it fascinated me to think about how like god not only took out the time to form me and you know create me and all of that but to also study my love language to study me as a person to know how to get the best reaction out of me how and when in what situations am i placed in to get my full undivided attention for some people you know um god uses the pain that they are currently going through sometimes he'll cause you know the radio in your car to start glitching and you know acting crazy so you could shut it off and so you can be able to hear from him sometimes you know he'll bless you with something it's something joyful something great just happened you got a promotion you know like or even the smallest things to remind you hey i'm here you know like i want to speak to you i want to hear from you and i want you to hear from me and i just think that it's so beautiful because and i guess this this will kind of serve as like a part two of my um last video um, when I was talking about like, you know, uh, the relation, the difference between being in a relationship and having intimacy in that relationship, um, because oftentimes even the person that we're in a relationship with, even the person that we're married with or married to rather, um, still doesn't know us enough to be able to know how to communicate with us. You know how we talk about love languages and everything like that? Like, what's your love language? And this is why so many um, couples struggle, especially married couples, right? Um, and I'm no relationship expert, you know, of course, or anything. I'm just sharing my views and my take on, you know, this topic. And I have just learned that a lot of relationships struggle because the two don't know how to properly communicate to one another in a way that is receptive to the other. Maybe the way that I show my love is to speak to you with passion and to be hard on you and to because I expect more of you and I expect better of you. But then the person that I'm doing that to, maybe they can't handle my love that way. So maybe I might need to find out what's the best way that I can get through to them in such a way that they'll be able to receive whatever I'm trying to pour out on them. Because if they can't receive it, then I'm just wasting my breath. It doesn't even make sense for me to keep show, trying to show them love in this way because it's coming out void. That's why when God says in the Bible, the two then become one because you're no longer just thinking about yourself. You're no longer thinking about how you're used to doing things and how you usually talk to people and, oh yeah, well, I'm just a passionate person or I'm just, that's just who I am or I'm just trying to motivate you. Okay, but find out how to get through to that person. It's the same thing in school. The teacher has to play this role where she he or she can't be one dimensional they can't just have one they can have a their style of teaching can be one way but they have to be know how to be able to like formulate it to every child or as many children in that class as they can because some children learn differently some children learn through you know getting certain images and you know the visuals and other kids they just pick it up like that some kids need the little extra help. Some kids need for you to be able to show it to them that way and show them a different method. That's why even in school, especially in math class, there are different methods. There, there are different ways of getting the same answer. And that's why most times, you know, and especially in the open-ended questions in math, they would tell you to show your work. They want to see how you arrived at that answer. They want to see your work because there's more than one way to get a solution to a problem. So... You know, we got to think of it that way also in relationships that just because I'm used to speak or I'm, I usually speak to my friends and family in this way and it gets through to them or whatever. But maybe you're a little bit more fragile. You're a little bit. I have to be more gentle and more tender with you. That's how you'll be able to receive this this encouragement that I'm trying to give you. And so I'm just so grateful that God takes the time out to learn me, little old me. While other people are struggling, you know, with so many other issues. Some people are struggling to wake up in the morning. Some people like are literally physically struggling to wake up because they're missing a limb or because, you know, they're depressed. Some people are waking up, you know, at the crack of dawn and having to go carry water. And me, God cares enough to study me and my love language so he can make sure that when he speaks, that 
I am in a position to be able to receive. He's not just speaking to me the same way he speaks to my brother, my sister, my mother, my brother, my friend, anybody. He takes the time out to, to really just direct his messages to me and specify it in such a way that I am in a position to be able to receive it. And so I just thought that was very powerful and I wanted to share that with you guys. And how, in case you guys are curious, like how this came about, and I promise this is not to gloat or anything like that. If anything, I kind of want to issue out like a small challenge. All of this came about because um, I'm driving on the freeway and then there's a man, a homeless man that's standing, you know, on the sidewalk and everything of the freeway. And, um, you know, when I have it, I usually like keep money in the car, just loose change, like a um, couple bills and stuff just to give out for that for that purpose. That's a part of what I consider my tithing as well, additional to um, the church and stuff. So, um but sometimes I don't have it. Sometimes I run out. Sometimes I don't replenish the money in time or I just don't have it in my budget at the present moment. And so I look at, but then every time that I don't have it, there's always like that part of me that's like, tag, like I wish, you know, I could give. And I don't feel guilty. I just wish that I had way more to give. I wish that I didn't forget the money at home. I wish that I could give them something. And so God knows that that's something that's very important to me. Like I just love to give to the less fortunate in whatever way that I can. And so um, when I drove past this man and I'm at the red light right under where he's at, where he's standing at, and then in my heart, just the usual you know, thought of like, dad, I wish I could give him something. And then God was just like, actually, you can. Not at this present moment. But I just started thinking, I'm like, okay, what can I give to this man or another person just like him in that situation? And so he just gave me this very simple yet, very brilliant idea to I'm like oh I can just like go to Dollar Tree or something and just get like a pack of like those little small thank you cards or whatever little cards um they come in a pack I don't know sometimes maybe up to like 10 cards and you get it for like a dollar or something and then just write like a little note out and then maybe each time that I'm giving this less fortunate person wherever they are a dollar or five dollars or however much you know I can put it inside of that card and just already pre-write in the cards, whether it's thank you for not giving up, like, or keep your head up, just a little encouraging message. And so I, I'm like, you know what, I'm actually going to make this project for um, some of the kids in my life, like, you know, my nieces and um, nephews and cousins and, you know, my son and all of that. So especially because, you know, it's Easter week. So I'm like, this is perfect. I don't want to do it just because of a holiday, but it, I think it means so much more. It's more amplified. Um, the fact, you know, with the hot, with the spirit of Easter and everything. And I'm like, that'll be just such a great encouragement. And I don't care if they take it and they throw it in the garbage, if they throw it back out, if whatever. It's just, it's about just pouring out into people because you never know, even if it's one homeless person that needed that, that actually take out the time to just open up that card. And wow, this person didn't just give me money. They fed me. They fed my soul. They give me that person. You don't know what their thought, their their mindset was that maybe they wanted to just end it. And so I would really encourage you guys to find whatever your way. I'm just want to issue out a challenge for all of us to try to find some small way. Maybe your way doesn't even include any money. You know, like it could probably just be every time you walk past or you know all the points where there are usually homeless people at, you just drive past and you're like, hey man, I just wanted to encourage you or, you know, God loves you or write them a note, you know, cut out pieces, like whatever it is. Maybe you carry some fruit with you. I don't care. Whatever God asks you to do, just ask God, God, please use me in a way today that will bless somebody else. And you can even do what I'm going to do. Just go to Dollar Tree, get like a pack of cards or some packs of cards and then just write thank you notes, even if you don't put any money in it, you know, like it's about just giving people hope because that could have been me. That could have been you. That could have been our loved ones. And I don't care what they did to get themselves in the situation that they're that they find themselves in right now. That is not my concern. I just want us to understand the power of gratitude, the power of giving and the power of hope. And um, I'm just so glad that God was able to use that homeless man to be able to speak to me. He will use the most unthought of things and people and places to get through to us. And that is what I love about God, that he doesn't need a church wall 
to speak to me. He doesn't need, you know, his Bible directly all the time to speak to me. He speaks to me in ways that I don't even see coming. And I love that about him. And so I just thought that was very, very powerful. Um, how he used somebody who gets looked down on, somebody who feels worthless and all of that and was able to bless me. So I thank that man for being in that position at that time so God can use him to bless me and to help encourage me to be a blessing to someone else. Hope this helped you guys.